Hello and welcome to Finextrum. I'm Hannah Wallace and we're here in Stockholm for Nextgen Banking Nordics. Joining me is Ilka Ruotsela from Deposit Solutions and we're going to be talking about open banking. Ilka, it's very good to have you here, thank you. My pleasure. Firstly, can you tell me what is driving open banking? Well, I can see a few trends happening already for, for, for some time. Uh, first of all, customers are really you know, uh, demanding open. You know, they want to have better services. Uh, better customer experience, even you know, lower rates, lower fees. We can see technology obviously enabling uh, open banking, you know, uh, cloud technology, uh, technology such as ours, uh, connecting banks. Uh, we can see regulation obviously, you know, really accelerating the, the open banking uh, theme like PSD2. Um, and obviously competition as well. I mean, banks have a lot of competitors that are offering uh, new services and especially, you know, focusing on those areas where where banks have traditionally been poor in service and high in fees. So I think those are the trends. And following on from that, how is open banking transforming the industry? Well, I can see actually two different paths uh, that we are taking right now. Uh, first of all, we have a path on the, on the front end side and then second on the back end side. And the front end side is basically what we have seen already, you know, a few years here, you know, as I mentioned, uh, customers want and banks are offering better services by, by uh, leveraging third-party service providers, um, uh, especially in those areas where they need help. Um, you know, for example, wealth management is a good example where the fees have been quite high, um, uh, but the service has been quite poor in terms of investment returns at least. Um, but then on the back-end side, I think that's a bit more interesting right now since that development is just about to accelerate um, and that's a development which will actually fundamentally change the whole banking infrastructure. I mean, we have had already for a few years players or banks themselves that have opened up to, uh, uh, the infrastructure as well, like core banking systems and payment systems, and then connecting third-party providers or them doing, doing this uh, by themselves and you know, uh, allowing, uh, you know, for example, renting out their core banking services to other banks. Now we can see services uh, like ours, for example, which is actually even allowing the banks to rent out their retail banking infrastructure outside their home countries, which is amazing. So it's basically doing the same as Airbnb is doing for, for the households, enabling you know, banks to lease out their, their, their infrastructure, which, in which they have committed a lot of capital into. And finally, you mentioned it's going to have a tremendous impact on banks and the industry as a whole. What do you mean by that? In this particular example of deposit solutions, uh, which I think is a great example of the structural uh, impact that will happen in the, in the industry, I can see three different uh, areas uh, how, the, how the industry will change. First of all, these banks that want to uh, leverage other banks' retail banking infrastructure, they can get access to new diversified funding channel, which obviously helps to mitigate their risks. Uh, they can cut their funding costs uh, and they can uh, balance, uh, uh, use their balance sheet in a much better way and, and, and manage that in a more precision uh, way than, than before. Uh, secondly, these banks that are you know, leasing out the retail infrastructure, uh, like you know, Airbnb is doing more or less, uh, it's kind of a strategic opportunity. So first of all, they can get rid of the over liquidity problem. You know, they have too much money right now, which there is a high cost for. Uh, they can uh, uh, build a new income stream, uh, which is extremely strategic opportunity in terms of open banking. Um, and finally, they can strengthen their customer relationships by uh, stopping the customer journey, which many of those uh, are experiencing right now, and still have uh, those customers within their bank to um, also uh, buy other services like wealth management and mortgages uh, because of this um, better deposit offering. However, I think that biggest traumatic positive impact is for the whole financial industry and the society in, in Europe. Because obviously uh, when there is a, uh, a, a, a more access to, to diversified funding channels, the, uh, the resilience of the whole banking sector in Europe will, will increase dramatically. Uh, secondly, of course, in these countries uh, where the banks get better access to funding and to lower rates, they can lend out to their customers in lower rates, which basically means that these corporates and customers, they have more, more disposable income, which again increases the GDP. 
Uh, and finally, on those countries where you have these banks that are uh, leasing out the infrastructure, they can offer much better deposit rates for the, for the households uh, by offering third-party deposits on their platform, which again improves the disposable income in those countries uh, and, and reflecting then uh, the GDP growth as well. So this is exactly what has happened, for example, in the, in the United States when they uh, open up their uh, interstate uh, deposit market and, and, and created this single market for deposits. Ilko, it's great to have you along. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. And thank you for watching.